for those of you not living under a rock, you already know that last night there was a debate between the pussy grabber and the kid sniffer, or Cheeto Jesus and sleepy, creepy Joe Biden. And it's times like these I'm 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 tempted to watch, but at the same time I know that I shouldn't. And what, what what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, they are trying to get you to sit down and absorb a two-hour duopoly press conference. I mean, like that—that's what this is. I, I guess before I go any further, I really should congratulate the winner of last night's debate, the American Military Industrial Congressional Corporate Banking Complex. Yes, all of the profiteers of American socialism. What we saw last night was not so much a legitimate debate as much of a clash of personalities and propaganda styles. Why do people watch these debates? Did, it, did anybody watch last night's debate thinking, oh, I'm going to come away informed, or I didn't really know who I was going to vote for. Let's see who embarrasses themselves more, and that's how I will decide how to cast my vote. No, I, I don't think that was the case nearly as much as to say that the audience was dominated by people going, Red team go, blue team go. And what we're talking about is the duopoly, the, 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 the two-party system that rules America, which when you look at how similar they are in all of the important ways, you realize that we have a one-party system in this country. And it's the American Socialist Party. They don't call themselves that. You have the red-flavored socialism, and then you have the blue-flavored socialism, and you can choose between one or the other. Yes, it, and it, it's true. The terms socialist, communist, and fascist all apply by their technical definitions very easily to the United States of America right now. Watch Magatard's heads explode when you point out to them that we have the majority of the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto fully and the rest partially in effect here in the United States. And Donald Trump isn't doing anything meaningful to challenge them. I'm pretty sure actions speak louder than words if someone says, I'm a capitalist, and then runs and perpetuates and grows a communist, fascist, socialist system that makes them fascist, socialist, communist. All those words apply to Donald Trump. They also apply to Joe Biden. So my condolences to the losers of last night's debate, the American people. And I don't hate myself enough to sit down and watch this debate. I mean, I, I could, I don't, I don't mean to say like, oh, I can't take it. I'm, I'm psychologically incapable of watching this debate. And, and you know, a, part of it is just the, the anti-authoritarian reaction that we all feel in a situation like this. Like, well, they want me to watch this. Well then fuck them. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. But then part of me says, you know, well, I'll, uh, you know, uh, 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 there are a lot of people watching this. I need to know what a lot of people are watching. But then my mother is a very good mother. And she said, well, if everybody was jumping off a bridge, does that mean that you would do it too? Can you ever be smarter than the herd? Yes. Now, I, I want to say you couldn't pay me enough to watch this debate, but that's not true at all. Because like I, even now I'm tempted. Oh, should I go back and watch it? I've heard so many so many crazy things. Should I go? Should I go back and watch the Trump Biden debate? Things I I know how I'm gonna feel at the end of it. I just it, it, an awkward, empty, sticky, gross feeling that I I mean you could pay me. I don't know. I'm cheap. I mean it's a, what an hour and a half without commercials. I mean, if someone wants me to really watch it, I, but I, I don't, I don't need to. And I, my audience doesn't care. Do you, do you care? You, does Adam understand what's going on in the world? Uh, I don't know. He didn't watch the debate last night. He must not really understand what's. N no, no, you know, that's not it. I guess, I mean, if someone wants to host a watch party for the next one and pay me to come, like, I'll come, I'll sit there. I'll, I'll, I'll even live tweet it and get in on the, 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 the circus. Although, as is now a cliche within 12 hours of this debate happening, calling this debate a circus is an insult to circus workers. 
So let's go to reason.com for, for some of the, the summary here. I, I told you I told you we were going to look at the summary. Maybe I'd see some highlights. I, I don't think there are any highlights that I really want. I mean, maybe uh, there's some moments that are worth me actually watching by video. But the, the title from reason.com is As Dumpster Fire Debate Rages, Jorgensen Quietly Presents an Alternative. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I love Joe, but there is a strategic problem with quietly presenting an alternative when you're competing for attention with this circus. Plus, Trump administration drops a bid to block undocumented teens from getting abortions and more. So, sounds like there was at least one note of, of significant policy that came out of the debate last night. CNN's Dana Bash told viewers last night, that was a shit show. Are you allowed to say shit on on CNN now? That's that's really fucked up. Because if I say shit or fuck or I don't know, I don't know what else on YouTube, our producer has to check a box on the video that says it has, might not be suitable for advertisers. Uh, that's it's just an excuse, yeah, to uh, to censor. Her usual on camera candor was topped by co-host Jake Tapper, who summed it up this thusly. That was a hot mess inside a dumpster fire, inside a train wreck. That was the worst debate I have ever seen. By the way, this is from uh, our friend Elizabeth Nolan Brown there. And I uh, appreciate her writing. But uh, it, I, 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 I have to question, and I don't know, maybe you'll let me know in the comments, but hot mess. I, I feel like I should have checked Urban Dictionary first, but I'm pretty sure hot mess refers to a woman who is otherwise attractive, but a mess, right? And I know it's come to, to apply to a lot more things than that, but th there's a weird sexualizing, emasculating use of this term here <laughs> from Jake Tapper that I think was deliberate, but uh, that hot mess inside of a dumpster fire and side of a train wreck uh <laughs> congrats 2020 you've gone and outdone yourself again debate commentary on social media and among reason staffers largely agreed a chaotic horrendous debate robbie so i've called the affair which was broadcast from cleveland ohio mostly unwatchable right eric bohm so you watch something that was largely unwatchable you could have just tuned into anna versus the man <laughs> instead uh, I can only tune into the end of the debate, which gave the collective WTFing afterward, afterward an air of, af I guess, after an air of initial mystery. What had I missed? What did you, if you're lucky, miss? Uh, there's a tweet she's quoted in here from John Cronkey. PBS test group. Nobody changed their opinion, and they are all disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could have told you that. But for all the consternation, it doesn't seem anything particularly out of the ordinary took place between Trump and Biden. Just the run of the mill sniping and lies we've come to loathe and expect. My reason colleagues can give you more detail. So here are the other headlines from Reason. Trump pushed to condemn white nationalists. Proud Boys instead tells them to stand back and stand by. Now, there's, there's, we're going to get into this uh, Proud Boys story about the debate because, you know, I mean, I, I last week was actually really, really tempted to join the Proud Boys just because I've seen how badly they're misrepresented in the mainstream media, which which leads me to think that like they're 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 just doing really successful trolling. But when you get mentioned at this national level and Trump responds this way, I, I, you have you know, and, and I'm I'm in contact behind the scenes with their uh, I, I forget his title, their president Enrique. And, and hopefully we'll we'll have him on uh, on the show soon. But to, the thing is, Trump was asked by Chris Wallace, and I actually did see this clip, to condemn white nationalists and or like the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys aren't white nationalists. I mean, they're white nationalists within Proud Boys, but to say, well, if there's something in something, then it is that thing. Well, then, th then America is retarded. <laughs> I mean, like, I just... <laughs> yeah, to be politically incorrect as possible here. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to come back to another story about that. Trump and Biden spar over which one is the true threat to America's suburbs. Yeah, that's the, the pandering. We're going to go straight to the suburbs. Donald Trump says Joe Biden is the candidate of perpetual COVID-19 lockdowns. 
Donald Trump is the candidate of, I'll do whatever I'm pressured into doing when it comes to the lockdowns candidate. I, 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 is, wouldn't that be worse? Uh, Trump claims Biden called black American super predators. That was Hillary Clinton. Uh, uh, I mean, he's he's getting old. I can, I can excuse Trump getting, getting a little confused on that because Hillary has said plenty of other embarrassing things about black Americans. Tuesday's debate demonstrated that Donald Trump wants this election to become a chaotic mess. In any event, the Biden-Trump debate was worlds apart from another presidential campaign event, which happened in Cleveland last night. This one featured Libertarian Party presidential nominee Joe Jorgensen, who will be on the ballot in all 50 states and the District of Columbia, but was not allowed on the debate stage with Biden and Trump. Instead, Jorgensen fielded video questions from voters and in-person questions from me last night. The Jorgensen campaign initially planned to host this counter-programming from an outside stage in downtown Cleveland, but after local police objected to the setup, it was moved to a nearby indoor studio. <sighs> you guys see, like, there's there's an, you're not, an irony here. You're not just shut out of the debates. You're shut out of doing a, a, a protest production outside. Yeah. While Biden and Trump flung outrageous accusations at one another and put moderator and Fox News anchor Chris Wallace through the ringer, Jorgensen and I had a substantive, civilized chat about her views, the LP, and the state of American politics. You can watch the whole thing on Jorgensen's Facebook page or via YouTube. A few things that Jorgensen said she would do as president. Let businesses decide for themselves whether to be open during the COVID-19 pandemic and whether customers must wear masks. Decriminalize marijuana and other illegal drugs. Support legislation to end qualified immunity and no knock rate. And it goes on. This this is an awesome platform. Uh, I mean, as as it's as she's quoted in here as saying, "No victim, no crime." Yeah, I mean, yes, that requires a certain amount of policy explanation, but that kind of says it all. When a candidate says that and means it, and says, "If there's no victim, there's no crime," that means not paying taxes, no crime. Not following regulations, no crime. Not adhering to COVID lockdown emergency orders, no crime. Doing a drug that the government doesn't like, no crime. Uh, what Jorgensen is offering the American people is her best chance within the constitutional framework to transform the federal government into a voluntary institution. You can't ask for much more than that as a libertarian. From the Neiman Lab, there's another uh, another tweet here she shared. Until the news media takes genuine policy debates seriously on a consistent basis, debates in the narrower sense of that word will, like so much else in America, continue to be a shit show. So yeah, finally, um, th this is just uh, you know some some more bullet points at the end of her story as she has here. Uh, a quote from R Street Institute senior fellow Paul Rosenweig. Rosenzweig. Recently, the United States has moved to restrict and control the content that U.S. citizens can put on their phones, initiating a ban of both WeChat and TikTok from web stores. While it is yet to be seen whether these bans ever take full effect as the dispute evolves almost every day, the ultimate success or failure of the American effort is almost irrelevant what is shocking and dismaying is that the effort was made at all. Well, it's obviously nothing new. And if you follow this show, you know that this is, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, look, look and, and it's funny how this came up in the debate with Dari. He was like, oh, yeah, well, you're censored. You got a quarterly on subs. I'm even more censored. And it's like, no, 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 no. Look at the view to subscriber ratio on this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Adam Gokesh, and you will see what shadow banning actually looks like in the scope and and even my old view counts but anyway back to the debate follow-up story from the new york post i i love this i i mean i love that the the, the, uh, the the this is this is this is the most american thing you could do other than buying property and declaring your sovereignty on it you know just just throw yeah. throwing that out there uh, but the next most American thing you could do in terms of declaring your independence, asserting your freedom, walking away from evil, oppressive systems like King George III's, for example. This story from nypost.com. Google searches for move to Canada. 
spike after presidential debate. Yeah. Uh, the presidential debate may send people up north instead of to the ballot box. Google searches for moving to Canada spiked after the 2020 presidential debate between blah, blah, blah. Queries for how to apply for Canadian citizen citizenship skyrocketed. About an hour into the yelling match between the two men peaking at around 10.30 p.m., according to Google. Wow. Like, they... You wouldn't even wait. Really, wouldn't even wait until the debate was over to go, fuck it, I'm out of here. No, like, an, an hour in the peak. How to move to Canada. All right, but let's get back to this, because there was one at least significant thing that came out of this in the exchange where Donald Trump uh, you know, was, was asked about white nationalists and the Proud Boys. And it's sort of like, well, how do you feel about white nationalists in the Catholic Church? Like, wh wh why are you grouping those together? And, and I get that, in, you know, in the political spectrum, there is, there is a bit more of a, a natural overlap. But the headline from the Daily Mail, we are ready, Proud Boys threatened to act and pledge allegiance to Trump after he told the far-right group to stand back and stand by during presidential debate. Remember? So, I, I mean, I, I want to get the, the exact quote here from the question because it, 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 he wasn't, and, and this is great, uh, the Proud Boys on Telegram have now, now posted an image with its logo and Trump's remark that's now part of their logo, now stand back, stand by. And, you know, there's, from, from what I can see, the Proud Boys, if anybody like deserves the title, are genuinely right libertarians. They're, uh, they, they describe themselves as Western chauvinists. That's not white chauvinist male. Ch and and they're, it's a males only group. I mean, you want to call that in and of itself inherently chauvinist. Um, fine. But. Uh, it's when when their president is not white, you know, you, you kind of have a hard time making this stick. So Trump was was asked to condemn, and, and again, I want to get, uh, I want to get this exact, I want to get this exact quote. Um, so it's a, will you condemn white supremacists? Proud boy, people. People are really freaking out about this, and I, and, and I, I, I think Trump really did a did a brilliant job here, pissing off the left and invigorating his base. I mean, that's that's kind of what he does. Um, and you know, so the Trump campaign tweeted after President Trump has repeatedly condemned white supremacists. What a ridiculous question from Chris Wallace. And so, for the, for the people who are uh, willing to conflate these things, what this comes down to is a, a fancy, bigger version of anybody who disagrees with me is racist. So, the, the, the debate moderator, Chris Wallace, asked the president if he would condemn white supremacists and militia groups. And if you if you would ask me that question as a as a candidate on the stage, um, you know, candidate Kokesh, uh, will you will you condemn white supremacists and militia groups? And I would say, well, those are two separate things, Mr. Wallace. Uh, a white supremacist is a, is uh, someone who represents a disgusting ideology of racism and supremacy based on that race. And while, uh, you know, every human being is deserving of love and, and, and respect, uh, and, and that's why I think this idea is so disgusting, I won't condemn the individuals, but I will 100% condemn any kind of white supremacism, white nationalism, or any kind of theory of, of uh, you know, race-based superiority. Yeah, there, end of story. Now, militia groups are totally different people. Militias are, are people who are willing to take up arms to defend their country and their communities. And there, there are certainly plenty of people within the militia movement who get that wrong, who do so for other reasons. 
and conflate other political things with that and not passing judgment on that because every group has people who bring in their own hangups and bad ideas. Overall, I would praise militia groups. Now, when you say the Proud Boys themselves, what are they doing uh, that, that's, that's worthy of condemnation? There's certainly ideas of theirs that I disagree with, but they are going out and, and protecting property and, and protesting within their rights and in a very American way in a, in a, in a spirit of, of peace. And if you look at what they're talking about, it's not anything to be condemned. And, you know, stand back and, and, and stand by, I would say, not only to the Proud Boys and to all militias, that things are getting a little hairy right now. And if I was Donald Trump, I would say what he said. I think almost everything I see is from the left wing, not the right wing. And it, it, I would call on all Americans to stand back and stand by and be ready. And in places where property is, is needed to be defended against, against the mobs and the hordes and violent looters and rioters, then use uh, as much restraint as possible in defending life and property. And I can't think of anything more uh, American in, in standing up for our rights than that, other than declaring your independence, of course. And yet, because this is happening the way that Donald Trump said it, and maybe, hey, I got to hand it to him. He's the marketing genius, although it's nice to watch his whole shtick collapse at this point. The crazy thing is that with the revelations this week about his tax returns, uh, revealing that he's not not only not worth $10 billion, not worth $1 billion, but may actually be, uh, on the whole, hundreds of millions of dollars in debt. That's, wow, yeah. Nice to see him with his pants around his ankles. The crazy thing is when he's up against creepy Joe Biden, the kid sniffer, he might still win. You know, we haven't broken through as libertarians. Joe Jorgensen has not broken through this year since winning the nomination. She needed to get America's attention by this first debate. She has not done it. And, and I, I hate to, to call myself the realist here. I am still 100% in it for Joe Biden. Excuse me, Joe Biden. That's the second time I said that. Uh, Joe Jorgensen. I'm 100% in for Joe Jorgensen. And, man, that was really bad, wasn't it? No. Uh, but, no, I, I'm, I, I think the best we can hope to do is, is cover the spread and be the spoiler. And that's uh, still 100% worth fighting for right now. Uh, I, I really do want to see Joe Jorgensen do well. I want to see her cover the spread, the difference between – Trump and Biden, and, and, and I want to see her uh, beat the numbers put up by Gary Johnson and, and Bill Weld from 2016. I think those are still realistic goals in this home stretch now of the last month of this campaign. Now, remember, this was portrayed as a Biden blowout from the beginning by the mainstream media, and, and in some ways, probably legitimately, rightly so, at least at first. And who knows, with all the uh, October surprise is already being thrown at Trump. It might stay that way. But remember, in the bigger picture, the two-party race is engineered to keep them neck and neck, the Democrats and Republicans, so that you don't waste your vote on a third party. They, it, it's part of the illusion that they are putting forth that your vote matters. And if you vote for the duopoly, it fucking doesn't. You might as well stay home. You might as well throw your vote away. And I'll, I'll mention again this idea of vote swapping, I think, is absolutely critical, especially after a debate like this. If you're a Trump voter, but you don't like him, and you know a Biden voter who doesn't like him, but you both prefer Joe Jorgensen or anybody else, any credible candidate, you, want to, you can cast a protest vote in a way that will make no difference if you both agree to vote for Joe Jorgensen and your lack of voting for your favorite duopoly candidate cancels the other one out. You get the idea. There is one other note I, I will say in sort of debate recap here that there is an enthusiasm gap. And nobody on the Democratic side is excited about Biden. And it's funny, if you think back about all the never Trumpers back when there was a big Republican field in 2016, people were going, oh, shit, 
Anybody but Trump. How are we doing it? This is insane. And, uh, you know, the Republican establishment is just team playing, riding their horse, uh, named Trump. But there is a huge base of enthusiasm on the Trump side. And I don't think you can discount this, you know, as, as another one of uh, Trump's Trump's cards and his ace in the hole. And this next story is from uh, kearneyhub.com. Traffic doubling each day at new Trump shop USA in Kearney, manager says. It's 3 p.m. Monday and David Searcy's store is filling with customers. None of them are shy about declaring their favorite candidate in the presidential election. Donald Trump cares about me and loves this country. My son has been dying for a Trump face mask and a hat and a flag. He's the warrior this country needs. He'll win in a landslide. And it's like, yeah. Wow. Wow. And I'd like to say you can hold your breath for a month, but the shit show is far from over. And there is still a huge opportunity here for libertarians to have a major impact promoting our national ticket. And I, I hope you'll all join me in that. And uh, in the next week or two, we're going to be having Joe Jorgensen and Spike Cohen uh, uh, in, in separately as guests on this show. And I, I hope that you'll see the importance and the opportunity here it's not that, ah, this is the most important election of your lifetime. Yeah, the most important election of your lifetime is the one that's about to happen that hasn't happened yet. That's kind of always the case in the distorted world of status propaganda. But now we still have a critical opportunity to break through. And I think after not watching this debate, any, any bribes yet? Anybody want to pay me to watch the debate with them? I hope not. But uh yeah, I think especially after seeing this debate from a distance, not watching it, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all the more confident that in the next month we have a serious opportunity. So keep being libertarian.